What's up everyone, it's Blaze here. And while I'm in a new recording space and so things are gonna sound a little bit different, um, it's kind of bare at the moment, but uh, hopefully we can work with that. And if there are any weird sounds in my audio, I'll do my best to fix it. So in this video, we are going to work with player skills. Now, before we get into that, we need a new set of sprites. Specifically, we need to create a bar for our UI. And in this case, instead of the HP, we are just going to duplicate it and we're gonna call it, instead of HP, we'll call it SP. Now to differentiate between the two, I'm going to change the color of this particular image here. And I'll go from green and I will switch it to, let's go with blue. All right. so. That's uh, that's one thing that we're gonna do, but for the rest of this video, let me just save that real quick. The rest of this video, we will be working with the parent unit as well as, not button, with the player. So let's actually get started with this one. I'll just expand this window for a second. And on a new line, what we're going to do is we are going to add the information for our skill frames. So let's go ahead and do that right down here. Okay, so we have our two lines here, which is our skill start and skill end, but we're not quite done yet. The next thing that we're going to do is because each unit in your game is going to have their own set of skills, we're going to need an array that will hold those skills. Okay, so don't worry about the name of the skill yet because we haven't quite got that in to our game uh, at all. So we have an actual C skills object, but uh, we don't actually have any code written for that. So don't worry about if your game breaks, we are not going to test our skill system until the end of this. For now, however, we have two things for each of our instanced player units, and that is skill zero and skill one. Now, the first one is going to be a single target skill, and then the second one will be a multi-target skill. All right, so that's it for our player. We're finished here, we can save it out, and we can head over to the parent unit. So now that we're here, Let's go over to the create event and let's add in some extra information. I'll close this off and we'll put a little bit of extra space down here. There we go, that looks like enough. And let's go through some of the new code. All right, the first thing that we're going to need is a new function and this function will be called use skill points and it will take an amount. What it's going to do is it's going to take our current skill points and it's going to deduct that amount that it needs, okay? So our skills, once we implement them, will have a skill point cost, but for now, we just need the function itself. The next two lines that we have here are for our learned skills. Now, for us, we only have two skills that we're going to implement into our little demo, but for you guys, I want you to create an array that's appropriate to the number of skills or the maximum number of skills that each unit can have. So using our Pokemon example, we would have learned skill zero, one, two, and three. But for us, because we only have two, we only need zero and one. Eventually these are going to be replaced by our actual O players skills here. Remember that this is the parent and so this needs to be overridden with this particular line. All right, let's go over to the last line of code. This particular line is fairly simple. All it is is it's a selected skill. Now, when we actually write up the code where we execute that particular skill, this will hold this information, okay? So just keep that in mind for your implementation that eventually when we select a skill in our game, this selected skill will hold all of this information. All right, so that's it for the parent unit. Let's head over to the step event. Hey guys, Blaze from the future here. We forgot to add in an extra macro for our create event. So what we're going to do is 
just add in a new line down here, go over and type in macro, and we're gonna call our macro skill, and it's going to be uh, phase number seven. So just keep that in mind that we need this particular line, and let's get right back on track. Okay, so for our next section, we have a new case, which is skill. Now, truth be told, skill is actually very similar to our standard attack with a few extra nuances. All right, this particular line is fairly simple. All we're going to do is if the head position of our player has reached the end of the skill unit, we're going to do some stuff and then we're gonna break out of the state. So let's fill in the information that we need. All right, the first two lines that we have here is we are going to call the function that we just created, which is use skill points. And we're going to take the information which we will implement later from selected skill. And we're going to take that cost. And then after that, we're going to set our turn finished to true. Now, truth be told, you could actually have this line as a call in your sequence. You could call it here. And that wouldn't be a problem. It's really up to you if you want to call it here in the step event towards the end of the animation or after or during or maybe even before. It's completely up to you. For our purposes, we are just going to use the skill points after the animation has finished. After that, just like the attack phase, we are going to set our turn finish to true. The next thing that you're going to do is you need to check if attack will hit, which is exactly the same as with above, which is right up here. The next thing that you're going to do if it will hit is we are going to change our sequence to idle start, just like the attack phase. And then we're going to change our state to idle. Now, of course, if we're checking for times that it will hit, we also need to do something for when it doesn't. The next thing that we're going to do is add one more line and what we need to do is reset our skill. There you have it. We are just going to reset our skill to none so that just in case we run into any problems, we know it's not going to be related to our skill. And besides, we need to reset it so that information doesn't get loaded into our turn automatically. So that's why this line is very important. All right, the next step is actually in the draw GUI event, which I currently don't have open. So let's go to that. Here we go, GUI. And here we're going to add in something similar to the HP bar, except this time we're going to make it for the SP. So here we go, we're doing something very similar. In fact, it's exactly the same as with the HP bar. We are taking our current skill points and we're going to divide it by the total skill points. All right, let's go to the next set of lines, which is again, very similar to the UI HP bar. Okay, so these next two lines are fairly straightforward. There's not much change between the HP bar the only difference is I've shifted it across 65 pixels. Now, the only reason why I've been able to take this approach is because my HP and my SP bars are exactly the same thing. The only difference with them is their color, but because we're not dealing with that, I don't have to worry about anything. So in the event that you guys have a different bar for HP and SP, you're gonna wanna have to check that. But for me specifically, and for this, series, we are just using something very simple. All right, so that's the end of our video right here. The next thing that we're going to do is we will focus on the skills section here. Now, right now we have zero information and after we're done with skills, this particular button, we can then test everything out. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, I'll have to check check up on that uh, at a later date and fix everything for us. So 